I'm Dr. Stanley I. Wolf, and I'm a physician, and my rank was at the Chosen Reservoir, was a Lieutenant J.G. in the U.S. Navy Reserve, and uh, I enlisted in the Navy when I graduated from medical school at Georgetown in 1948, and uh, I had been deferred during World War II to go to medical school, and at that time they were threatening all of us who had been deferred with the doctor draft, we're going to get you, and I figured it's peacetime, and I'd rather be in the Navy, and my dad had been in the Navy in World War I, and uh, so I enlisted in the Navy, and they had a program where uh, they paid for your internship, and you owed them one year of active duty. And uh, I requested duty in San Diego, I had been on the East Coast all my life, and I was fortunate enough to get that, and I was stationed at the boot camp there in San Diego uh, for uh, uh, s seven months, and then there, I wanted to do pediatrics, and there was an opening in the pediatric department at the Naval Hospital in Balboa at that time in San Diego, and I was transferred to the Naval Hospital, and uh, uh, I spent uh, the next year at the Naval Hospital, and I, that's where I was when the Korean War started, and uh, I had shipped over. I decided for an additional six months, and I was thinking of making the Navy a career. I had such good duty, a bachelor apartment at the beach, and, and I liked San Diego, and uh, all of a sudden I'm in the Marines, and uh, they sent me up to Camp Pendleton, California, and my basic training for combat was two weeks of calisthenics at Camp Pendleton. And I got on a ship called the Al Gol. We had 400 troops, and most of them were, like myself, reservists who had had no real basic training. And uh, I had all these Marines who would come in to me and say, Doctor, I've had, they had been to the chaplain, and the chaplain had sent them to the doctor. And the doctor said that, uh, they said they've had no training, and I said, I haven't either. <laughs> and uh, in any event, we landed at Incheon, and uh, on the way overseas, we stopped at Kobe, Japan, and we had skirted a typhoon to go across and had all these guys who had been so sick and so, and I was the only doctor on the ship, and I had not much I could do for them. They got over their seasickness, got to Kobe, and they knew they were going into combat because they, Korean War had already started, and uh, uh, they had their last liberty, and the MPs brought these boys back to the ship so drunk and so sick, and they had sewage ditches on either side of the road, and they had fallen into that, and you can imagine what they were like, and our corpsman had to put take care of them. In any event, we landed at Incheon, and it was on the, <coughs> the Incheon invasion was uh, September 15th, 1950, and we arrived on the 20th, and they had already secured Incheon, and the 1st and the 5th Marines were in the outskirts of Seoul, and our battalion, the 7th uh, our Regiment, rather, the 7th Regiment, was the reserve. And uh, my first experience was we landed at the Kimpo Peninsula, and they said, dig a foxhole. And I don't like dirt, and I dig a little six-inch thing, and all of a sudden I hear pow, 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 and I thought, oh my God, they're firing. So you get out and you dig deeper, and it turns out they were firing at a cow in the field, and all night long they were firing, and they missed him. And I thought, oh, I'm in trouble. I'm in big trouble. In any event, we got into Seoul, and all of a sudden I grew up. It was no longer fun and games. And we went across the Han River into Seoul, and it was like Dante's Inferno. The sky was lit up, and the, the, the ambulance jeeps coming back with wounded, and we're going into the city. And our, our 2nd Battalion, 7th Marines, was thrown in to relieve the 5th Marines, who had been there in the attack. And we worked through Seoul and moved on up about 20 miles to a town called Weejambu, and uh, I was awarded a Bronze Star for uh, attending to, to wounded under firing conditions, and there was plenty of firing. These were from the North Korean uh, uh, enemy, who were still resisting the South Koreans and the Americans going north. And at that time they had decided on 
another amphibious invasion since the Incheon invasion had been so successful. So they brought us back to Incheon and we got on board LSTs and this group moved down then around Pusan and up into the uh, Sea of Japan uh, to North Korea, to Wonsan. And um, our battalion was the first ashore, 2nd Battalion, 7th Marines, and they had had 10 days up and down, up and down, while they cleared the, the largest minefield in history was in the Sea of Japan at that time. And uh, they, we went ashore and the South Koreans' uh, troops had broken through and secured that area. So there was no, uh, had they, had they uh, had resistance, I don't know whether we would have made it because there was, uh, the Wonsan was a beautiful harbor, but had these islands all around and uh, uh, the, uh, the enemy having control of that harbor would have been awfully hard to dislodge. But in any event, we went ashore unopposed and they had us get on board trucks at that time and move up to toward Hangnam in North Korea and from there we started ascending the mountain.